Hey everyone, in this video I'd like to talk to you kind of briefly about a problem I ran into and what my solution to it was. So the the problem, or what I needed to do, was get a server up and running that had HTTPS as an option, so we needed the appropriate certificates. Uh, however, the issue was that I wanted to use Let's Encrypt, and I still do, Let's Encrypt is awesome, it's free. Uh, but the certificates, the files that Let's Encrypt provides you are not in the appropriate format for the type of server that I was using. So Let's Encrypt will provide you with these .pem files, a, a pem file for the private key, for the certificate, for the certificate chain and all that. But what we needed for this particular type of server was a .pfx or a pkcs12 formatted file. And that's like a single file that contains the private key as well as the certificate. So the server wanted that format. Let's Encrypt provides this other format. And it's not that difficult to convert between the two using OpenSSL. But the thing about Let's Encrypt is that we have to renew on a regular basis every like 60 days, every like two to three months. So how do you automate that and make it so that you don't have to manually go into the server and convert your PEM files into PKCS12 files every time uh, two months goes by. So this was my solution and I will quickly walk you through it. First thing to point out is that this is available on our GitHub page. So under Stormwind Studio slash OpenSSL notes uh, under let's encrypt underscore auto pfx.md. That's where my notes for this particular uh, solution for lack of a better word are. So let's take a look at our situation currently. So I've got this demonstration server up and running and there is a directory that I want this PFX file to go into. And this is kind of similar to the directory that uh, we use in this production server. So it's like slash opt slash something. In this case, I just called it apt, app, excuse me. And we want to put our PFX file once we've made it into that. So that's the first uh, thing that I wanted to show you. That's our destination folder. Uh, what else do I need to go over? Well, I guess I should say that all the groundwork's been laid. I've got CertBot installed. I've got the server set up. I've got uh, our DNS entry set up so that CertBot can actually validate that we are at this particular DNS address. And now uh, we have to uh, kind of get the, the script that I wrote up and running. So I, I wrote a script that will be invoked every time Let's Encrypt renews the certificate. So every time it renews the certificate, the script will run, it will do the conversion, it will back up any previous copies of the P, uh, PFX file, and then it will put the new one in place. So let's uh, quickly, I kind of have to get things arranged here because I don't really want to type out the whole script, I'd rather copy and paste. So let me kind of quickly get things relatively somewhat arranged and usable How's that? That's okay, that'll work. All right, so the first thing we need to do is, since I've got CertBot installed, we have this slash Etsy slash Let's Encrypt directory, but we actually want to make a, a specific directory here. Um, so I think it's mkdir, it might be dash p. I could be totally wrong on this. If I am, I'll just like restart the video. But I think if we do it that way, we can kind of specify any parent directories that should be created as well. So the directory we want is slash Etsy slash let's encrypt slash renewal dash hooks uh, slash deploy. And now hopefully I got my flags right. All right, yeah, good deal. All right, so we've got those direct that directory set up now and that would be set up automatically when you install uh, when you uh, start or or sort of request your first certificate, but I'm just going to make it now so I can paste the the script in. And here's the script. You can just kind of copy and paste this in, and we'll go over it. But first, I'm going to copy and paste it in uh, to that directory that we just made. So we go to renewal hooks. We go to deploy. And I'm just going to call this auto pfx.sh. And we are going to paste this in. That's not paste. This is putty. All right, so there we go. That's our script. And it's not that readable, but 
it, I think everything should be good for this server. So I'm actually going to uh, save that. And let's actually go over to the script here in the browser and take a look at what it does. So first off, we specify where we want the certificate to be stored. In this case, again, it's gonna be in slash opt slash app or wherever else you need to put that PFX file. We specify a password for it. Uh, so OpenSSL will want that. And in our case, the actual server software wants that as well. So you can specify a password to protect that PKCS12 file. And then the next variables that we're kind of defining in this script, you don't necessarily, you probably won't need to modify. So they're using, they're kind of concatenating this renewed lineage uh, variable with the name of the individual cer certificate files and chain file and private key file that uh, Let's Encrypt provides. So this renewed lineage variable is actually provided by CertBot when this script is invoked. And it will just sort of provide the full path to the current certificate files and, and so forth that Let's Encrypt uh, provides. So this just provides us our path and then we also add on the specific file name for our private key, for our certificate, and for our chain. All right, so you don't necessarily need to change those. You probably won't. So, so far we've only defined variables and the two that you might need to modify are up here. But the next thing we do is we check that cert path right here. Does it exist is what this is saying. So if it exists, then we might not want to actually delete an existing uh, PFX file. We might want to just back it up and that's what we're gonna do. So if this exists and we are renewing and we want to update it, instead of just overriding it, we will figure out what the current time is and then we're going to move the existing certificate to a new file name that is dot back followed by the appended time. So this will kind of keep this running um, sort of backup or versioning of the PFX file as Let's Encrypt and CertBot kind of renew it and the script is invoked. So you won't lose any of your, your, your PFX files uh, by using this script. And that might be important. You might, uh, you might need those for some reason down the line. So the last thing we do in the script is we run the OpenSSL command that actually takes the, these three files and outputs a, P, a PKCS12 file. So this is the command, in case you were wondering, it's OpenSSL PKCS12 export. We specify that the output should be the certificate path, which is gonna be here. We specify the private key, the certificate, and then also the chain or the additional sort of certificate file that can be specified. That's actually optional. And then we also specify a password here. And the syntax is a little weird, but you use the dash password uh, flag and then you have to say pass uh, colon followed by the password. So that's what the that's what's going on with this script. We're really just after a renewal, we're grabbing those new PEM files, feeding them into uh, open SSL and then saving the output in the directory that we want. So that is our script. Last thing we have to do after having saved it and updated the variables is we have to, of course, chmod it. So you could do like a chmod plus X if you want. I'm going to do chmod seven. Uh, let's do seven five five. Yeah. And the path to that script. So seven five five, just make sure that it can be read and and executed. Maybe I'll do 750. There is a password in there. So maybe 750, just to be safe. But what that'll do is uh, either the, the, the owner of this file, of this script, or anyone in the same group can uh, at least read and execute it. So we'll just, uh, we'll just go with that. You could probably restrict the permissions more. But we'll do that. Then if we do an ls-al, just make sure that everything looks good. It does. It's executable. We can tell because it's got nice colorization. Now we have to actually request the certificate. And you do that. In our case, we're going to use cert only. And we're going to say standalone because I'm not running Nginx or Apache or anything. Again, the server software that we're using isn't any of those mainstream 
uh, product. So we have to actually uh, do a standalone request where CertBot will spin up its own little web server uh, just for the purposes of, of validating our domain name and it will then destroy it once everything's done. So we'll say cert only dash dash standalone. We might be able to specify the domain, which in this case is serverboy.tachyon.cx, silly name. You know, really at the bottom of the barrel uh, for coming up with new names for my various uh, projects and so forth. But yeah, cert bot, cert only standalone domain. I believe that's the correct one and it looks like it is. So let's go ahead and try this. So we can enter an email address. I'm going to use, well, you know, I'm just going to use a, a fake one. You shouldn't do this, but honestly, for, for my purposes, uh, I'm just gonna delete this anyway. So it shouldn't cause any issues on their end and it won't cause any issues on my end. In production, you definitely want to have a valid email so that they can let you know if there's any issues with your certificate, you can get a heads up. So there's our fake email. We're going to agree to the terms of service. I'm not gonna share the email address just because it's fake. So I don't want to send EFF any fake email addresses, that wouldn't be cool. I'm gonna say no. And now it's gonna go through and attempt to validate that the server is who it says it is, and it did. So now, if we go to the same directory where we're expecting, well, at least the Let's Encrypt directory, we can go to live and then the name of the particular domain name that we requested those certificates for. And if we ls that, notice we've got cert, we've got chain.pem, we've got full chain, we've got priv key, we've got all our pem files, nice. However, one thing that hasn't occurred yet is we haven't actually converted those to a usable format for whatever our server software is. So if we go to slash opt slash app, nothing there. And the reason is if we ls again, Notice that we put that in renewal hooks, right? That's renewal hooks, not just general hooks. So that, that script's only gonna run in the future for renewals. So under renewals, you know, we have deploy. So that's when you successfully get a certificate, it will run the script and it's gonna run auto uh, PFX. But we didn't do a renewal now, so it didn't actually accomplish anything, or at least the script didn't run. So what you can do, you could do two things. You could use this OpenSSL command here and just sort of substitute in the variables and that will work. Uh, however, if you are feeling a little bit lazy, you can just force a renewal to get this working. So that's what we're gonna do. Again, don't, we shouldn't be rude about it and just be running all kinds of renewals all the time because it's not good for, for Let's Encrypt, but you know, once or twice is probably fine. So we're gonna force the renewal and it's gonna kind of go through and do its thing. And notice that it did run this script now. So it ran the script after we got the certificate. So what we should now have, if we do ls slash opt slash oh, app, now we've got this certificate.pfx, this, this uh, PKCS 12 certificate that can then be pointed to by whatever software we're using that requires that. If you want to validate it, you could do like OpenSSL, uh, PKCS12, I think info in, and the import password is whatever I specified in this. I think it's something silly. Yeah, shooby dooby. And look, there we've got our uh, certificate information and other information about the certificate. Well, other information about the request, you can even get or print out a, an encrypted variant of your private key. But we're not gonna do that, I'm just gonna control C out. So we've su successfully made this PFX file. Uh, we've successfully requested it. I'm just gonna run the renewal one more time because the last thing you wanna verify is that this script isn't going to overwrite a, a certificate. You wanna, well, it, it will replace it but it's not going to overwrite it, right? So you still have the ability uh, to, to go back and look at pre uh, previous certificates. So once again, anyway, let's go to certbot renew, force renew, sorry. I feel like uh, kind of a jerk doing that. 
And then once again, if we do LS opt app, there we go. Here is our current certificate from the request that we just made, that renewal we just did. And then here is the one from the first renewal that we did. All right, and then what this will do, what Certbot will do is every so often, it's going to renew our certificates. And every time it does that, it will convert the certificate information to a PKCS 12 file that we can then use. One last thing to check is, uh, depending on the system you're on, this might be in different places, but at least on this system, we could do system CTL list timers. And right here, well, somewhere in here, let me kind of make this a little larger. And yeah, notice that we've got CertBot. So you might want to make sure that you've actually got CertBot in there uh, as a timed job so that it actually does renew when you're expecting it to. So cool, we've now got this PFX file. It's going to update automatically. No manual interaction required on our parts. Really the last thing that you might need to add to the script is at the very end, you might want to make sure that you restart whatever server is using this certificate file. Uh, the reason is if it continues, if you don't restart it, it's probably going to continue to use the previous uh, PFX file and that's not really what we're aiming for. So you might need to restart the server as well whenever you do a renewal. But I think that's about all I wanted to cover. Yeah, I think everything else is listed here in the notes. So once again, that is at Stormwind Studios, OpenSSL notes, Let's Encrypt Auto PFX. And hopefully for some folks out there, this is somewhat useful. You know, it's, um, it will hopefully work well <laughs> for us. And I did want to share that in case, again, anyone else is in a similar situation. So with that said, have a great day or evening, and I'll see you in the next video.